welcome back to our channel. Today, it has been a hot minute since we've done like a full recipe tutorial on this channel. But today we're going to be doing a paleo caramel slice. It's actually pretty simple, like we've got all the ingredients laid out in front of us and we were just like, hmm, that's all. That's yeah, that's like pretty much everything. Things, which is pretty good because it's good. easy and it's no bake as well. So this is more like one of those paleo raw desserts. And it's actually one that we've done on our Instagram before. So if you finish this video and you want the full recipe, it is going to be over on our Insta. I'll just show you guys the picture or I'll pop it up on the screen. So you can find the full recipe over there if you're after that one. But we're going to be showing you guys in real time how we make it. Yep. So we're in my kitchen today. Yeah. As you can tell, well, somebody's in the background who needs some snacks and activities being detained in the chair <laughs> <laughs> a little victim so yeah so we're in my like little home kicking home kicking home cooking mama kitchen yeah and one thing about this recipe before we get started so it is a little bit higher in sugar because we're going to be using quite a few dates so this is a recipe that i would consider to be more like an actual dessert rather than like, you know, an everyday snack. Mm -hmm. um, so just a good thing to keep in mind that it is a little bit more heavy on the sugar. Natural sugar, but sugar nonetheless. Yeah, I actually do make one that's a keto-like version, so maybe eventually we'll put one up that is also a no sugar option. But um, this one is nice because it's more like gooey, whereas the slice that I make, which is also like a salted caramel, is like definitely more firm. We'll jump into the recipe. So for your ingredients, you're going to need one cup of raw cashews, half a cup of desiccated coconut, three quarters of a cup of almond flour or hazelnut flour, one teaspoon of stevia, three teaspoons of cacao powder, one and a half tablespoons of coconut oil, 18 dates that have been pitted, a quarter cup of coconut cream, 90 grams of 90% dark chocolate, and then optionally, you can also use some chunky sea salt. So the first step that we need to do is soften up these dates with a little bit of hot water. So I've got my kettle on the stove. And this is the closest to cooking that this whole recipe includes. So other than that, we're just using our food processor. So we're going to put all of our bits for the biscuit base into our food processor with a large blade. So that is our cashews. We're using almond meal today, but you could also use hazelnut flour. We've got our desiccated coconut. So now we put in our sweetener and our cacao powder, three teaspoons. Got one and a half tablespoons of Coconut oil, which today is completely melted because it's a hot day. Kind of random weather though, like it could be totally solid tomorrow. And then a little bit of sea salt. Okay, so we're gonna just blitz this for like probably around 30 seconds, but basically as long as it takes to get well combined. As you can see, it's kind of still a little too crumbly. Like if you make raw desserts, you know that you want it to be like that little bit more like hanging together. Mm. So an easy thing you can do is just add a little splash of water, probably about a tablespoon here and put it back on. So this is looking perfect. Basically what you could see is that it was balling up a little bit in the blender, which means it's going to form like a really nice base that doesn't sort of crumble apart. And we're going to pop that into our little tin. So we're going to scoop out this biscuit base and put it into our tin. So we've used some baking paper to line like a glass Pyrex dish. You could also use like a standard loaf tin, but you get the picture. Okay, so we're having a slight interference, <laughs> but we're on to the second layer. Next layer, so for the caramel filling, we're just going to drain off our dates and we're going to whiz them up in the food processor with our coconut cream. Yep. So we're going to start by draining these. Careful. Over the top of the baby's head. <laughs> the water has cooled off, guys. Okay. 
do is just pop our pitted dates that have been soaking for a while into our food processor. We're also going to pop in about a quarter cup of coconut cream. And we're also just going to put in a little pinch of sea salt as well because we all know that salt makes caramel pop. So we are just going to blend this for a few minutes. You just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth and that there's no more lumps of date. So when this is done, it should be like a smooth paste almost that we're going to layer on top of our biscuit base. Cool. So I've just paused it for a second and I'm going to scrape down the edges with a spatula just to make sure that there's no lumpy bits left behind. So we have just finished up with our caramel gooey layer. So as you can tell, it's fairly smooth. The longer that you are willing to process this, the smoother that it will get. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're just going to layer this on top of our biscuity base in our little tin. So that's just been sitting out on the bench and I'm going to layer this up and then we'll pop it in the freezer. If you're doing it at home, the best way to do it really would be to freeze it overnight so that it's fully solidified before you go in with a hot layer of chocolate. Our slice has been in the freezer for I don't know, like half an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and start melting our chocolate. So this is gonna be the final layer. I'm gonna use about, this is 100 grams. You probably only need about 90 grams, but I might end up using the whole thing anyway. And I'm just gonna melt this in a pan, then we're gonna pour it over the top and I'll take out our slice like the very last minute so that it's as solidified as possible before we go in with the hot chocolate. By the way, we're talking slightly quietly because baby has gone down for nap. So we have just popped this out of the freezer and it should be firm enough to slice up. Transfer the brick. As you can tell, we haven't left it in like overnight, so it's still a slight bit soft, but if you leave it overnight, it should be easier to... Shall we give this a shot? Let's give it a shot. Are we? So we forgot the trick to slicing this. That is to heat up your knife with a bit of hot water, and that will help to slice through the chocolate layer without cracking. Okay guys, we tried. So we vote to eat this with coffee now. And I'm gonna put the rest in overnight and show you how it slices up once it's had like a proper, like at least 10 hours in the freezer. Because anyway. about one and a half hours didn't really cut it. That first slice went well, but yeah. Okay, so it is now the next day and I'm just over at Bex. We're gonna have some morning tea and we're gonna cut up this slice. So fingers crossed, it actually works this morning. I think- uh, It'll be fine. I think, <laughs> I think Beck has taken a small sample in between yesterday and today. Yeah, I sharked a little <laughs> bit of it uh, last night and it cut up fine. So I think we were just over eager yesterday and this filling definitely just needs a bit of extra time, especially when it's hot. So we have it out so. here in front of us. We're gonna chop it up and we'll show you guys the finished product. All right guys, so we are about to sign off here. We have got our slice. We've got our cups of tea. And that's about it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed this recipe, as I said before, you can find it over on our Instagram, which I'll link in the info box below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and we will see you in our next video. Bye guys.